Here are five coaching concepts that need to go away. Here's a list of all five of them, and then I'm gonna lay into each one individually. Number one, hell weeks. They're dumb and not effective and tend to just hurt your players or make them underperform. In football, guys, I've heard the football is like war argument. Hell weeks are necessary. Don't try me. Number two, punishing the entire team for one kid misbehaving. I know you're a team, but I don't care. Number three, using push-ups as punishment. Hey, guess what? Most kids, even at the high school level, can barely even do one good push-up. There are better ways. Number four, quit panic conditioning or over conditioning your team, especially before the season even starts. And last but not least, number five, quit putting your hands on your head when you're tired. Put your hands on your knees. There's a study that came out almost four years ago now that proves it's more effective. Also, before I get the it looks soft comments, do these guys look soft? No, they just transcended the egotistical tradition of nonsense that still exists inside of sports, even though science tells us otherwise. It's not about what you perceive of your opponent. It's more about what you believe in yourself. Now, hopefully that I got your attention. Let's dive deeper into each one of these topics. Please feel free to comment your thoughts. It leads to some great insights and sometimes some really good perspectives that are important to talk about. Hell Weeks. I am all for teams working together on challenging drills or concepts, but all too often are Hell Weeks taken to an extreme. Challenging things done excessively and stupidly without a base plan annoyingly leads to a ton of injuries throughout the season or before the season even starts. Or athletes just hating their sports because of Hell Weeks. It doesn't weed out the weak people. It just traumatizes young kids, especially those that might be a little hesitant to actually play their sport because of their skill level or their personal experience of being in a social setting. By starting off the season with one to two weeks of extremely hard conditioning or whatever nonsense you're going to do in a hell week is a great way to limp your team into the season. Definitely when a lot of the times hell weeks come after summer break where athletes should be having a rest and also enjoying stuff outside of their sport. No professional team does a hell week and there's a reason for that. Get rid of them. Number two, punishing the entire team for one kid misbehaving. Every team has their ups and downs and a lot of times has one to two kids that tend to talk too much, be a distraction or disrupt practice. To punish the entire team because of that one kid has never made sense to me. It's just ridiculous and it happens all the time. I also think a lot of the topics I'm going to go over today still exist based on tradition of this coaching concepts that trickled their way down. My coach did it, so now I do it, which is Dumb. I also know I'm going to get the comments, win as a team, lose as a team. But I didn't say mistake, I said misbehaving, which needs to be taken care of individually, not spread broadly across the entire team as a punishment. And for this one, I'm going to explain an easy way to take care of it. Let's say we have a kid talking too much and being a visual distraction during practice. Stop coaching and address them directly. Say this exactly. This is the expectation. You should not be talking while I'm talking. Keep your hands to yourself at all times. The next time this expectation is not met in any way, shape, or form, you will set out for the rest of practice. No need to yell, no need to do anything crazy, just explain this to them, and then ask them, do you understand the expectation that I just told you? Once they mess up, even in the slightest, don't yell, just say go sit down. And they're going to sit down for the rest of practice, and don't even think about being nice and let them back in. The whole time, I don't care if it's the beginning of practice, they're sitting out. Next practice, before it even starts, let them know there will not be any warnings, there will be no expectation talks. You know the expectation. And if it's not met again, you're sitting out. That's how you take care of it. That's how you develop a team that respects you as a leader and you take care of issues to help out the whole of the team instead of just punishing them. Number three, using push-ups as punishment. There's nothing wrong with push-ups. The issue is most kids don't know how to do them correctly or they just lack the strength to do them properly. The times in which I've seen coaches use push-up as punishment, oftentimes they're rushed through, they're done really sloppy, and the coaches rarely teach them any sense of technique and just yell out nonsense in order to try to correct it. And like I said before, on average, even kids at the high school level may lack the strength to actually do one properly. So it doesn't matter how much technique you give them, they're still not going to be able to do it well. So what should you do instead? First of all, you could do a hand release push up where you're actually pressing up, taking your hands off the ground and then pushing back up. It's an easy regression to work on staying one piece as you come up and one piece as you come down. Then whether you're doing hand release push ups or regular push ups, program them into practices, actual sets and rep schemes so you can actually build on doing correct push ups. Then over time, you can progressively increase the amount of sets and reps they're doing per practice. Constructively use them as a building tool versus using them as a wasteful punishment. Number four, 
quit panic conditioning or over conditioning your team. I say panic conditioning because all too often do coaches before season even start throw a ton of conditioning at them to get them into shape. And it's really not all that urgent. At the beginning of season or over the weeks, if you increase the overall volume or amount of running an athlete is doing, all too abruptly, the odds are there's going to be way more injuries than you're going to want to deal with. You might not see it at first, but over time, those wheels are going to fall off and things are going to start popping up. Especially in the first couple of weeks of season, the best thing you can do is set up a base plan of the amount of running they're going to do and keep it consistent and make sure it's not too much or over the top. Or honestly, you could just not do any extra conditioning the first couple of weeks and just have them acclimate to playing and training again. I think you'd be surprised how efficient this actually will be when it comes to not only conditioning standpoint, but injury prevention and actual speed on the field or court. A worn down athlete or an athlete that's doing way too much conditioning when it comes to being a speed or explosive sport You'd be surprised how much it wears them down, which also slows them down during the season, especially at the end, where they can't perform as well as they actually could if you weren't doing too much conditioning. Would you rather have a fast, healthy athlete or an athlete that can run two miles under 12 minutes, but they can't perform to a high standard and win games? Number five, putting your hands on your head when you're tired versus putting your hands on your knees. I've done several videos on this concept and I don't think it seems to get out as much as it actually should as far as information and people utilizing it. They did a study in 2019, almost four years ago now, that significantly showed that putting your hands on your knees versus putting your hands on your head is way more effective at actually recovering your body so you can perform better. Bringing your heart rate down faster, being able to recover and being able to sprint hard again if you just put your hands on your knees versus your head. Hands on your head, it's a myth. If you want to go check out the study, the link is in the description. Go check it all you want, but trust me, it's real. And whenever I've done videos on this topic before, I always get the comments in the comment section of, well, it looks soft. I talked about it before, but let me respond back to that because I had a lot to say, but I'm going to put it in a very short potent sentence. If you think something looks soft or weak in contention with it being more effective, your ego might be the soft thing. All right, that's all I got. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Check out any of my other videos or send this video to a coach that might need to see it or would just enjoy it as well. Thank you.